Good evening, everybody, and welcome here as we get ready for our 25th race of the season, third season of the Ansel Duracell Cup Series. This is the next to last race until the playoff grid is put together, and it's one of two opportunities for drivers to get a last-minute win to get themselves into the postseason with a chance at challenging for the championship. Tonight, we're getting ready for 70 laps of racing at Bristol Dirt. Uh, to my knowledge, I believe this is our fourth dirt track race of the season. Our first one, of course, was at the Springfield Mile. We then finished out the first half of the regular season at Fuel Motorsports Park, and then we had those two heat races a few weeks ago at the Chili Bowl. We're here tonight at what will be the final dirt track stop of the regular season. And it's going to be 70 laps of wild action here this evening. Is track position going to be important? Well, take a look at our front row here. Benny Watson coming into this race, currently fourth in the overall standings. He is the second highest in points without a victory. So if he wins tonight, absolute guaranteed spot into the playoffs. And alongside of him, Vince Salmriego, who just one week ago at Pocono picked up, picked, picked up his first career Duracell Cup Series victory. He came into that race 15th in points. He's 13th in points coming into tonight. That victory last week put him into a playoff position with two races left to go. So not only did he get his first win of his career, he also has locked up his first playoff berth. So a big day last week for our Pocono winner. You got rookie Aaron Macklin up here. He's dead last in the points, so very unlikely a win would put him into a playoff spot. Same deal for Mitchell Collins rolling off in fourth. Collins is 35th in the standings, and he is about 35 points back from 30th in the standings, so we need an awful lot of help if he were to uh, get a win here tonight as far as points are concerned, get up into the top 30. And we'll get to why in just a moment. And completing your top five is going to be Jacob Thibodeau, two-time winner this season. Uh, actually, one of his wins was at one of the heat races at the Chili Bowl, the last dirt track that we were at. So we'll see if uh, how he does here tonight. He's in a little bit of an interesting situation, though, coming into this race because even though he's got those two wins, he's 29th in the point standings. And he's only seven points ahead of the 30th in the standings cut line. So Thibodeau needs to leave here tonight with a good run. If he drops outside the top 30 when we get to the conclusion of next week's race at Auto Club, doesn't matter if he's got two wins. Doesn't matter if he's got 20 wins. If he's not in the top 30 in points, those wins do not count towards a playoff position. Now, if we're looking here real quickly, because being Bristol, it's a half-mile racetrack. It's going to take them no time at all to complete the pace lap, so we won't be able to get all of this fit in during the pace lap. Uh, what would the playoff standings look like right now? Well, currently, it would be Dylan Young, top of the board with his three wins, followed by Jose Mills, Austin LaPlante, and Jacob Thibodeau, your two-time winners. Right now, that would be four drivers that currently would be in playoff positions with multi-time wins. The rest of the one-time winners that would fill in the remaining 12 spots include Jack Mitchell, Zach Rogers, Cody Lamas, Levi McIntyre, Matt Haas, Vince Almriego, Nathan Hudson, James Qualls, Keith Batson, Ryan Brommer, Jordan Lopez, and Carter Friesen. There are a couple of former winners that are inside the top 30 in points that have wins, but they're not high enough to be able to get one of those 16 spots. They include Nathan Ormond. He's 26th in the standings. Bear in mind, he won at Bristol when it was the paved version earlier this season. And also Marcus Sachi, our Dover winner, he's 28th in points. So those two guys, Ormond and Sachi, they're going to be gunning for Carter Friesen here tonight to try and pass him in points to get themselves up into a playoff position. Of course, if we have a driver up there in the standings that hasn't won yet this season, that changes the whole uh, landscape as well of the playoff standings. As far as drivers just on the outside of the top 30 looking in, Charles Sanford is 31st in points, 5 points out of 30th, and Carson Gum is 33rd in the standings. He's 21 points back from 30th in the standings. So uh, looking like our Daytona 500 winner, time is very quickly running now for him. I think really he might be coming into tonight's race almost in a must-win situation. He's got to accumulate that many points in order to make sure he even gets up there in the top 30 in consideration for a playoff spot. Now, bear in mind for Charles Samper and Carson Gum, if they both get a second win and they jump up in the top 30, they leapfrog all those other guys that are ahead of them with only one win. So, right now, if Samper and Carson Gum win here this evening or next week at Auto Club and make their way into the top 30, they would get themselves a playoff position. So, we can't leave that out by any stretch of the imagination. But now, finally, as I've been able to go through all that, let's go down trackside. Let's get those most famous words in motorsports and get ready to go racing here tonight in Thunder Valley. Drivers, stop your engines! 
So as of right now, drivers definitely confirmed in the playoffs. We already knew about Dylan Young, Austin LaPlante, and Jose Mills, multi-time winners. Jack Mitchell's already locked in, Zach Rogers as well. Cody Lamas, Levi McIntyre, Matt Haas, Vince Salmriego, Nathan Hudson, James Qualls, and Keith Batson. Those drivers all are confirmed. They will be battling for the championship this season. Couple of drivers with good runs here tonight. Uh, if they finish well, they will also be in to the playoffs after uh, this race. They would include Jordan Lopez and Ryan Brommer. Brommer going to be starting up here inside of the top 10, so we'll see if he can stay up there. 70 laps of racing here this evening at Bristol Dirt. Who else might get a last-minute playoff spot? Let's roll at Bristol. As we try and see our way through the dust kicked up there in one and two. Battle is on for the lead. Aaron Macklin to the inside of Benny Watson. Who's going to lead the first lap? It's going to be the KB Racing Enterprises rookie, and he leads it under our first caution. That didn't take long at all. Yellow flag coming out on lap one. I'm looking towards the back to see who might have been involved. There's a couple cars coming out of pit lane, and one of them is Charles Sanford. Ryan Butcher's got damage. Austin Colano is on pit road. And there's another car on pit lane there, too. I'm pretty certain I saw. That's uh, rookie points leader Patrick Smith in the 77. So right there, our top two in the rookie points are uh, involved in this first wreck. Smith came into this race only four points over Colano, but the both of them caught up in this one, and Charles Sanford is already out of the race. That is a tough break for the 0-3 car, who... May now have to rely on a must-win situation next week at his home track of Auto Club to maybe get into the playoffs. And another car coming to pit road. That's the 42 of Vince Salmriego, last week's winner. Don't know if that's a regularly scheduled stop or not. We'll go back and find out as we're under caution for the first time already here tonight on lap one at Bristol. Going to see a lot of this here tonight. Jose Mills into the left rear quarter panel of Patrick Smith turns him down into Levi McIntyre. There's a hard shot into the inside wall for that uh, Toyota Camry. And then sliding on the dirt, there's no way to, to be able to slow up. It slides up into Austin Colano, Charles Sanford, Ryan Butcher, and Cole Deaver in the 08 also got a piece of that I didn't realize. So what looked like it would have been just a two-car incident because there's just no grip. These cars are sliding. Smith slides up into three and collects about five more drivers, including his teammates. So both of the AJR cars were involved in that one. And brings us under the first caution of the night very early on in this race. And we haven't gotten the one green signal yet. Probably will get it this time around. Two drivers out of the race, Ryan Butcher and Charles Sanfer. Well, Ryan Butcher was 22nd in points. A win could have maybe put him into a playoff position. Charles Sanford, we already documented five points back from 30th in the standings. He was 31st in points coming into this one. And I, I think right now, I mean, obviously, I think Sanford is in a must-win situation next week to get back in the top 30 in points because he's going to finish dead last here tonight. But also, you consider the fact that there's guys ahead of him in the top 30 in points like Nathan Norman, Marcus Sachi, who right now, according to the live playoff grid would not be in the playoffs they'd be uh, in the 17th and 18th seed right now so no doubt about it Charles Sanford at S3 Motorsports will be in a must-win situation next week to even have a ghost of a shot of making it into the postseason lights are out atop the pace car we're going green this next time around it will be Aaron Macklin the race leader Benny Watson the pole sitter now in second Jacob Thibodeau third Jack Mitchell fourth fifth place is Mitchell Collins, rest of the top 10 are Matt Haas, Ryan Brommer, Phil Parker, Charles Belding, and Carson Gum. Rookies Patrick Smith and Austin Colano, one lap down, losing a lap on pit road, having to repair their damage on their respective Camrys, so they will be on the inside line here for this restart. Restart will come out with seven laps on the board. Green flag is out, and Macklin's going to get away. They're going to go three wide behind him there. That's Watson way up on the top side. The lap car is splitting him three wide with Colano on the bottom, Smith in the middle. That's a pass for position between the 81 and the 77, but now it's a battle for second. Here comes Collins to the inside of Watson going three wide. 
Watson trying to find his way back to the bottom. He just lost second to Collins, third to Matt Haas. And now it's Ryan Brommer looking for fourth place further back there as Collins closing in on the 93 of Macklin for the race lead. I'd have to look back through my notes, but I'm pretty certain the defending winner of this race is just now up inside the top 10. 10th place running Carter Friesen. I believe he was the uh, winner here one year ago. I'd have to go back and look through my notes, but if my memory's not failing me, then that is the case. Matt Haas now going to move by Macklin for the second spot. Matt, of course, winning earlier on this year at Kentucky. He's locked into the playoffs and now trying to become a multi-time winner along with drivers like Jose Mills and Dylan Young, Austin LaPlante and Jacob Thibodeau. Speaking of Thibodeau, it's a battle here for the third spot between himself, Charles Belding, a couple of, actually three rookies all mixing it up for the third position. And Caution is out again. And that's Zach Rogers, I believe, in the six that was sitting idle up in the middle of turns one and two up near the upper groove. And why that's important is Zach Rogers came into this race 38 points back from Jack Mitchell. Remember, we're still basically having a battle for the overall championship of the regular season because that's 10 bonus points towards the playoffs. And it was really down between Jack Mitchell and Zach Rogers. And if Zach Rogers is going to suffer a DNF here, that may be giving those 10 bonus points to the 0-1. Saw Zach Rogers on pit road, and everybody is going to come to pit road this time. So on this second yellow, coming out on lap 13, everybody is on pit lane. And had a little incident back there. Ryan Brommer is staying out, and I think he might have gotten into somebody. No, well, maybe not. Oh, he faked them all out and stayed out. I'm not sure what the strategy is here for the nine car, but he'll get a bonus point for a lap lead anyway, unless, wait a minute, he's scored in 35th. Let's see where he crosses the line now. Crosses in 36th, so he fell a lap down somehow. Wonder if he might have gotten into his teammate. Maybe it was a couple of Bulldog Motorsports dodges that brought out the caution. We're going to follow this uh, battle off pit road real quickly, too, because this is going to be... Uh, Really all about track position here for these guys. Looks like everybody's going with four tires. And it will be Matt Haas winning the battle off pit road over Carter Friesen and then Nathan Ormond. So Matt Haas is going to be the leader when we go back green. Let's go back now and see what brought out this most recent caution. Well, you know the old saying, short tracks breed short tempers. This is a battle here between Zach Rogers and William Brock for around the 33rd position. You see Brock's going to hook Rogers in the left rear. Rogers goes down, and I'm not certain this was intentional because you see right here, Zach's trying to make the entry into the corner from way down low. He brushes the wall, and when that happens, it just sends the car straight. But it kind of seems interestingly like poetic justice that after the 88 makes contact with the 6, he is the one that gets swept up when Rogers uh, is not able to make the corner there. And a lot of damage there all over on the rear left side front of that Monster Energy Dodge Challenger. Zach Rogers is going to be out of this race. Lucky for him, he's got that win earlier on this season at a dirt track, Springfield Mile. He's second in the point, so he's already locked up into the playoffs, so he can afford bad performances here in the final two regular season races. But I'm certain that he definitely did not want to end tonight's race this early. Nonetheless, he brings out our second caution of the evening here at Bristol Dirt. We're getting ready to go green, and the field looks really weird right now. Drivers trapped a lap down the tail end lead lap. You're looking at the race leader, Matt Haas, who's going to restart over Carter Friesen, Nathan Norman, Carson Gum, and Adam Garcia. That's going to be your top five green flag back in the air. It was Nathan Hudson, Phil Parker, Keith Batson, Jessica Shelton, and James Qualls, the top ten. All these guys up ahead of Matt Haas, like Lamas, Brock, Turner, Mills, Acosta, Young. They're all hoping for a quick caution to be able to get back onto the tail end lead lap. Charles Belding's up there as well. And so right now, the battle looks like it's going to be between Carson Gum and Matt Haas for the race lead. 
And Gum is going to lead that lap as he now goes three wide. They're four wide back there. That was Batson putting Al Mariego in the middle and almost up into Cody Lamas. That was close. Carson Gum trying to scamper away, and of course we mentioned a second win could help Carson Gum get back into playoff contention. Trying to get around his backmarker motorsports teammate there, Charles Belding. Belding not giving him a whole heck of a lot of room. That's three-time winner Dylan Young up there on the top side of this three-wide battle. That now puts Belding and Dylan Young a lap down. New second place car is Keith Batson right there behind the 22 of Mitchell Collins trying to catch up to the 19 of Carson Gum. Right now the third position would be Nathan Hudson in the 24, there he is. And now up to fourth place they're saying is the 09 of Kyle Matthews. Who is now under fire from Johnny Gardner from that position as well as uh, Cole Deaver is on the lead lap too. Gardner just moved up to fourth, Deaver up to fifth. Now just loses that spot to Cole Baker, who moves into the top five. Move back up here to the front. Battle for the lead is on. Carson Gum, Keith Batson. Two former winners this season. Carson winning the Daytona 500. Batson winning two weeks ago at Watkins Glen. Carson Gum trying to make it to the inside of Matthew Rodriguez put him a lap down. Matt Rod right now scored in the 24th position, so we've got only 23 cars currently on the lead lap. Should document after that uh, last caution, we do have another driver out of the race. That is Zach Rogers, he'll finish in the 38th position. Look at there, Mitchell Collins blocking Carson Gum down to the inside, not allowing him to pass him. That's because Collins right now is on the tail end of the lead lap, as was Ryan Brommer. Well, actually, no, Brommer, I believe, actually was... Is Brommer one lap down as well? He is. Um, going back to Ryan Brommer, I actually looked back. At the time the caution came out, Brommer had come to pit road. He did his four-tire stop, but he didn't get off pit road before he was lapped under pacing. So that's why he stayed out under the last caution, because he had already been on pit lane. Keith Batson right now in the second spot, running a little less than six tenths of a second behind Carson Gum. He's also got the lap machine of Mitchell Collins between himself and the 19. And then there is the third place car, Cole Baker, currently trying to get by his teammate Charles Belding. Cole Deaver with that rear end damage got caught up in the first wreck of the evening. Still up to speed, and right now inside of the top five, and then running in the fifth position is where you find James Qualls, our winner from Pukaka. Another driver that comes into this race already locked into the playoffs. He's now under fire from Matt Haas. That's a battle for fifth place, and Haas looks like he's going to take it. Carter Friesen now in the seventh spot. Right behind him is Jordan Lopez in eighth, Jessica Shelton in ninth, and a guy that has just dropped like a rock is Nathan Hudson. He's now fallen back, I think, to around the 12th position, losing spots to Johnny Gardner and Phil Parker. Pole sitter Benny Watson is now a lap down in 28th, and a lot of drivers fell a lap down or were just in the tail end of the lead lap with the timing of that yellow coming to pit road. And we had a lead change, by the way, there. Keith Batson just got around Carson Gum, so he goes out in front. But a lot of drivers fell a lap down or on the tail and lead lap because of just the fact that it's a half mile racetrack and with varying strategies being such a short track, a lot of drivers are going to lose time, going to lose laps on pit lane. So as Batson shows the way, the battle right now was for second. Cole Baker took the spot away from his teammate Carson Gum, who now is also going to lose third place to Cole Deaver. I don't know if these guys may be good to go on fuel or not. They all came to pit road under the last caution. So if we manage to go green to the end, do these drivers have enough to make it to the checkered flag or will we see pit stops again before this race is over? It's the closest battle on track right now at the front four position. Cole Deaver starting to reel in Cole Baker. It's the Cole and Cole show for the runner-up spot. Cole Deaver coming into this race, currently 18th in the standing, so if he were to win here tonight, he would put himself into a playoff position. 
And that would knock Carter Friesen potentially out. Right now with Keith Batson showing the way. Batson looking to pick up his second win in three races and third career win overall. But he's got a couple of Chevrolets reeling him in. This battle for second place as it's been heating up. They've also been slowly reeling the 39 in. And don't count out Matt Haas in that eight machine as well. Remember he restarted as the leader but kind of got boxed in behind lap down cars, tail of the lead lap cars. So don't think we've heard the last of this speed raceway Toyota Camry either. Exchange for second just completed. Cole Deaver getting by Cole Baker. Now he sets his sights on the 39 of Keith Batson for the race lead. Batson just got around Trey Wright, putting the 28 car a lap down. Right now about six and a half tenths separation from the Jim Beam Ford Mustang back to the GM Goodwrench Service Chevrolet. Deaver's going to have to deal with the lap machine of Trey Wright first. He may actually have to deal with Matt Haas before that. Right now, Ford, Chevy, and Toyota, your top three. Next car that Keith Batson's going to have to deal with is Ryan Brommer. Right now in the 21st position, first or last car on the lead lap. And he's going to try and also make a move around Austin Colano, who is multiple laps down. Same for Patrick Smith. They're both off the pace. We're involved in the first caution of the evening. Batson's going to get to the inside of Colano. Deaver did manage to get around Trey Wright. Matt Haas about to do the same. There's Carson Gum right now riding in the fifth position. Qualls in sixth. His teammate Johnny Gardner now in seventh. Eighth place, Jordan Lopez. Jessica Shelton right now rides in the ninth spot. As a matter of fact, she just lost ninth place to Michael Norman. And that drops the 0-2 back to 10th. Thibodeau right now 31st on the running order. Two-time winner, we mentioned. He's down near that cut line as Nathan Hudson in the 24 is on pit road. That, I think, is a regularly scheduled stop. So are these guys going to have to pit before this race is over? They may. Nathan Ormond is also on pit lane in the 41. But uh, going back to Thibodeau, he came into this race only 12 points ahead of 31st in the standings. If he finishes down where he is, he may drop out of the top 30 in standings. Hudson now leaving pit road. Ormond still sitting on pit lane. Bit of extended stay for both of those drivers, it seems. As Batson continues to show the way as we are at less than 20 laps to go. The battle right now is for third. Cole Baker and Matt Haas. Baker's going to take the spot away from the eight. There you see Orman now leaving pit lane. Still a ways to go in this one, so the question is, what about fuel? Ryan Acosta and Jessica Shelton are on pit road. And for Shelton, that's a driver that was inside of the top ten. That says to me that all these guys cannot make it the rest of the way. It's going to come down to green flag pit stops, and here comes the leader. Keith Batson is in. Marcus Sachi is in as well. I believe I just saw Johnny Gardner on pit road. Matthew Rodriguez as well. That turns the lead over to Cole Deaver. This is the money stop. I can't remember when we've ever had green flag pit stops at Bristol Dirt. This is a new one for me. Austin the Plants on pit road. Jose Mills. That was James Qualls leaving pit lane. As Deaver continues to stay out. Now remember, Deaver came to pit lane after getting involved in the first wreck. So he can stay out maybe another four or five laps longer than everybody else. But I don't think he'll be able to stay out before we get to the end of this race. Battle is on for the lead. This time the Cole and Cole show for P1 as they had to go three wide with Ryan Acosta leaving pit lane. Matt Haas is now up into the mix along with Carson Gum in the 19. The top four all within about a second of each other. Baker's going to go to the point. Cole Baker, 38th in the standings. A win would probably not put him into a playoff spot, but a win is still a win. And Baker wants to get one. 
Cole hasn't won since the Charlotte Roval back last season during the playoffs. And right now it's Backmarker Motorsports 1-2 with Baker and Gum lined up nose to tail. 10 laps to go. Are these guys in fuel conservation mode? Can they make it the rest of the way? We saw a number of drivers inside the top 10 have to pit, including Keith Batson, Jessica Shelton, Johnny Gardner, and others. Some new names as a result have popped up into the top 10. Phil Parker's up to 8th. Levi McIntyre is 9th. Adam Garcia in 10th. And Matt Haas just made his way through for second place as I believe someone may have hit pit road. No, I guess not. I thought maybe Carson Gum had hit pit lane, but no, he did not. You see right there, Matthew Rodriguez flying up there. You can see the difference of new tires. James Qualls in the 54 has already been on pit road. He's going to bypass all these guys. So we're seeing the difference between new tires and old tires for sure. As Baker shows the way, and right behind him, Matt Haas and Carson Gum starting to heat up the battle for second. Gonna be six laps to go this time. Who's got the fuel to make it? Cole Baker just went around. Kyle Matthews putting him a lap down. Carson Gum makes the pass for second on Matt Haas. Now we'll go to the inside of the Hooters Chevrolet and put Kyle Matthews in his rearview mirror. Now sets his sights on his teammate. It may come down between a couple of back marker motorsports teammates. Cole Baker not really running a defensive line there going into turn three. Carson Gums closing up the gap and he's closing up quick. Nathan Ormond on fresh tires though is going to get around Carson Gum as well as Cole Baker. That may open the door up for the 19 to maybe make a move on the inside. Here he comes. Carson Gum gets to the left rear quarter panel. Three laps to go at Bristol Dirt and he passes for the lead. Jose Mills is on fresh tires. He's going to pass these guys quickly. Same for Johnny Gardner. Question is, can Cole Baker use these faster machines that are getting by Carson Gum to maybe force a hold of the inside and take away the race win? Carson Gum, this next time by, will see the white flag. He enjoys about a four-car length lead over his teammate Cole Baker. White is in the air. Carson Gum trying to be a two-time winner this season and put himself back into playoff contention. He started out the season with a win in the Great American Race Daytona 500, and tonight Carson Gum is going to win here at Bristol. And what did we say? Top of the program. If Sanford or Gum, who are outside the top 13 points, got a second win, they leapfrog. Everybody else inside the top 30 with a win, and Carson Gum did it. There's going to be highlighters thrown in victory lane tonight. I hope that everybody is wearing safety glasses. As Carson Gum. What an up and down season. I mean, the start of the year with the win in the Daytona 500, and then after that just was dropping like a stone through the standings. Out of the top 30 in points, I think at one point he might have been dead last in the standings in one week. And somehow, someway, making it interesting, keeping his playoff hopes potentially alive with the victory here tonight at Bristol Dirt. Joining Austin LaPlante, Jacob Thibodeau, Jose Mills, and Dylan Young as a multi-time winner this season. It's a backmarker Motorsports 1-2 finish as his teammate Cole Baker finished in second place. Matt Haas brings it home third. Cole Deaver in fourth. Carter Friesen will finish the night out in the top five, so that keeps his playoff hopes alive. Uh, that, that top five might have just locked Friesen into the playoffs, actually. Jordan Lopez there in sixth. Michael Norman seventh. Phil Parker eighth. Adam Garcia was ninth, and Jack Mitchell, another top 10 from out of nowhere for the points leader, as uh, he and Levi McIntyre in 11th were the last cars to finish on the lead lap. Only 11 cars finished on the lead lap after that long green flag run to the checkers. The rest of these drivers here, I mean, I'm really wondering about some of these guys like Batson and Qualls and Shelton all coming to pit road. Uh, I don't know if they were short on fuel or not, but... I'd, I would love to, to go down a pit road and find out what was going on with those guys because a lot of drivers pitted there 
under that long green flag run, yet Carson Gum and those other guys up there that finished in the top 10, they were able to make it the rest of the way. So, very interesting um, strategy that went on there, and I'm not really certain I can give a logical explanation one way or the other, but Ryan Brommer, first car one lap down, will finish in 12th. Remember that he um, ended up falling a lap down after pitting just before the last caution. And so definitely a good run for him there coming back from what could have been a finish down in the 30s, maybe the mid-20s. Mitchell Collins will finish 13th, Kyle Matthews 14th, Cody Lamas in 15th. The rest of the top 20 were William Brock, Charles Belding, Jesse Turner, Dylan Young, and pole sitter Benny Watson. Jacob Thibodeau will finish in the 21st position. I'd be a little bit worried about that. However, some of the other guys that he was battling with in the point standings finished around the same vicinity. Kyle Matthews in 14th. Charles Sanford finished out of this race. And Jesse Turner, who was the guy that was kind of the buffer between him and the cutoff line, talking about Thibodeau, uh, he finished in the 18th position, only three positions ahead of 33. So Thibodeau, for the moment, might still be in the top 30 in points, but he's got to get a good run next week as well at Auto Club. You look on down through the remainder of the finishing results and a lot of drivers two laps, three laps, even four laps down here, all based off of what happened on the green flag pit stops. Three drivers finished out of the race after two cautions here this evening. Zach Rogers, Ryan Butcher, and Charles Sanfer. So most of the scenarios now are all in place heading into next week's regular season finale at the Auto Club Speedway. As of right now, though, I believe Carson Gum has jumped up into the top 30 in the points with that second victory on the season. Now he's got to keep himself there next week at Auto Club to be eligible for a playoff position. We'll have to see where this situates Thibodeau. We'll have to see if Charles Sanford, even in a must-win situation, if he has enough of a gap that he can make up with a victory next week to get himself up into the top 30 in the points. And, of course, a couple of other drivers, I'm sure, have now locked themselves up spots in the playoffs with the runs they had here tonight. Jordan Lopez, I think, is locked in now. Carter Friesen, I believe, is locked in. Ryan Brommer as well also, I think, is locked into the playoffs now. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens next week at the Auto Club Speedway. If you enjoyed tonight's race here from Bristol Dirt, be sure to give us a video like. Subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you your full finisher results. These are what your point stands look like heading into next week. And boy, oh boy, we're going to be working the calculators next week, no doubt, to see who is going to maybe have a last-minute effort to make their way into this season's Duracell Cup Series Season 3 Playoffs grid. But until then, I have been Seth Cole. You've been watching a production of the Answer A Offline Racing at its best.